Hey everybody. Modal verbs tend to cause people a lot of headaches and it's not always because it's hard to know which modal verb you use in a specific situation. Sometimes it takes a little bit of different a little bit of work to remember that auxiliary verbs don't always work like regular full verbs, let's call them, um, do. So the purpose of today's video is to explain the difference between regular verbs, normal verbs, and, mo and auxiliary verbs, and explain a little bit the f about the four main differences between how they work. Okay, so let's get started. We know from our previous classes that a verb is a, work th is a word that describes an action, a state, or a mental activity. And one traditional way that we've always had of dividing verbs is to organize them in the categories of transitive, where they have a direct object, and intransitive, where you don't need a direct object to complete the idea of the verb. But there are some things to remember. Not all verbs behave or work in the same way. And that's the focus of this video. Let's refer to verbs at, like to be, to go, to have as full verbs. I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. One other way you can divide verbs is to talk about them in the sense of normal verbs and auxiliary verbs. And here's the difference between the two of them. If you're thinking of a real full verb, that's a word that typically has an infinitive. It can be used in past and present tenses, and it can also be used in continuous and perfect tenses. To eat, for example, I can say, I ate, I have eaten, I have, I have eaten, I have been eating, I will eat. All of those are perfectly okay because I can put place them in the past, present, and future. But with verbs that help, either because they give us a clearer idea of the time, or they give us a clearer idea of our attitude when we speak, that's not always true. Some normal verbs can be adapted to give us different times and different tenses. If you combine is, do, have or will, and you put it with a participle, that'll give you present perfect simple, past perfect, future perfect continuous. Okay? Time auxiliaries are the auxiliaries that help create verb tenses, but they're not the only auxiliaries that exist because we also have auxiliaries that show our attitudes or our interpretations about something that's happening. And these are the modal verbs that tend to give people a lot of trouble. You're probably um, familiar with the idea of can and can't for ability. And also the alternative don't have to if you do need to express past or future. We, saw, we also have modal verbs for obligation, should and must. But you have to be careful with modal verbs. And right now, we're going to go through the four typical mistakes that people make and look at how you work with them correctly to avoid the typical mistakes that people make. First one, it's not an auxiliary verb in your language, but maybe it is in ours. And in case of Spanish, I'm thinking specifically of words like deber or poder. It's a full verb in Spanish, but in English, it's only used as an auxiliary. Second mistake, you can't do the full verb things that you could do with a regular verb. For example, I can't say too must. He was shooting. I have may eat. Okay, can't do an infinitive. Can't make a continuous tense. And it's not possible to use may as the main verb in a present perfect, in a present perfect verb formulation. 
And that takes me to the next point. In standard English, it is not correct to use more than one auxiliary verb in a verb phrase. You can only use one at a time, with one exception, and I'm not entirely sure why. Okay, In standard English, you couldn't use an, um, an attitude auxiliary with a time auxiliary like you must did work. Similar thing here, he will, time, should, attitude, it's just not done. Not in correct standard English. With the exception of present perfect simple. And I've been trying for a week to figure out why it's incorrect with all the other tenses, but it's not a problem if you put an attitude auxiliary with present perfect simple. I don't know why I've been trying to figure that out. But it's important to remember, again, because these attitude modals are not full verbs in English, we don't normally use more than one modal verb in a verb phrase. You definitely don't use two attitude modals together, and it's not standard English usually to use a time and an attitude together. Now something I don't hear very often, but which does come up time to time, is the placement of an adverb, especially an adverb of manner, or an adverb of frequency with a modal verb. Generally speaking, if you put the adverb between the modal and the verb, or between the time auxiliary and the verb, you're okay. Here are some examples to show you how to do that. Must never be, should always finish. Okay, we know from experience that typically an adverb of frequency would go after to be, but in this case, we'd put it between both parts, the modal, and the main verb. If in doubt, do this, because people will always understand that the ideas are together. And that's primarily with adverbs of frequency and adverbs of manner. Got it? Thanks for sticking with this one. I know this one's a little more complicated, so feel free to send me an email or leave a comment in the comment questions, because I've been working on this video for about a month and I do have the feeling that I've forgotten something. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section or send me a message through either the blog, stop-spanglish.blogspot.ca or you can also contact me through the website, which is www.stopspanglish.com. Now the website is primarily in Spanish, but you will see that there is an email function at the, on the right hand side. Feel free to send me an email anytime you like. And you can also send me an email if you're looking for classes, too. You don't need to speak Spanish as a first language to have classes with Stop Spanglish. Oh, and don't forget that we're also on social media. Look for Stop Spanglish on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn.